Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Let's Not Talk About It. Let's not talk about it. Some of you all have heard individuals say things, and you were disturbed by them. You wanted to talk about what those things were. But no, uh uh-uh, I don't want to talk about that, was the response. You may have been hurt by someone saying something that was disrespectful, or you noticed someone doing something that was immoral, unethical, what have you. And the individual responds, let's not discuss, or you didn't see that, or I don't feel like talking about it. Or the ever popular one, mind your own business. Okay. There are going to be those moments that God is going to convict us to talk to people, even when they don't want to discuss it, even when they want to run away from you, walk away from you or shut you down, shut you out, or even go so far as to cut you off. I want to talk about this, but I don't. I want to address this issue, but I don't. You see, and so when you are up against the wall like that and you know this is something that's very important to discuss, that is when, especially in the workplace, you got to do the workarounds. We're going to escalate this matter. We're going to talk to someone who is in a position to get this thing stopped once and for all. We're going to get an intercessor (laughs) prayer warrior involved when it's spiritual. We're going to get a group of individuals when it's an intervention, but we are going to do something about it. Oh, you don't want to talk to me? No. Oh, okay. You want to shut me down? Okay. Then supply is cut off. Whatever the supply is that they are receiving from you. Oh, now they're going to want to talk. When communication shuts down. And that person is used to you coming around and communicating or picking up the phone. Oh, now you want to talk. You want to talk about why I shut down. You want to talk about why I'm not giving you any longer. You want to talk about why I'm not showing up here, there or everywhere. You want to talk about why I'm not supplying you with the service, with the products. Oh, now you want to talk, you see. Because you got these individuals who are simply put unrighteous. They are not living a righteous lifestyle. They are not thinking righteously. And some people say, well, what exactly is right? Right is the opposite of wrong. If someone has standards, if a group has rules, if there are regulations and procedures or what have you to follow, if you don't agree with them right in the workplace, you simply look for another job. Or if you want to be around for a while, you might bring up in a professional, polite, respectful way what bothers you. That's what most people do, right? And if there is change, then you are willing to work with the group, with the person, what have you. If there is no change, then you know that you've got to look at alternatives. No sense in venting, no sense in complaining, no sense in talking behind people's back, only for them to run and tell someone, only for somebody to come up with a way to pay you back. You see, because that's the cowardly way when people talk over here, but then they're not confronting or they're not addressing or they're not writing things in a professional, respectful manner, or they're not sitting down having meetings. Those cowardly type, all they know how to do is whisper, whisper, whisper. They don't get things done. But God, he empowers us to speak up. We can speak up without the attitude. We can speak up without the argument. If the person chooses to get emotional and argumentative, that's on them. If we want to address an issue, we can address it in such a way where we don't have to uh, take their negative energy and make it a part of our own. Instead, we can go into that faraway place in our minds in the midst of the difficulty and the struggle or what have you that the person's trying to put upon us and have a smile on our face. And they'll look at us and think that something is wrong with us or we're crazy. <laughs> but whatever you have to do to keep from stooping down to somebody's level, which is disrespectful, evil, ugly, dark, unrighteous, whatever you want to call it. I will tell you, though, that this person who doesn't want to talk, who doesn't want to discuss, right? This is an individual that right away is going to uh, 
push you away because you're asking questions that they don't want to answer. You're going to probe. You're going to, you know, make them be accountable to something that they really don't want to be accountable to. Okay. And you do it in so many different ways. Some of you all, you know how to get people to respond. I mean, leaders, we see them in media. They have a way of getting people to do what they want. If it has to be about something uh, very dark, very ugly behind the scenes that we don't know about, they have a way <laughs> of getting people to do what they want. You can only hang up the phone on somebody for so long. Some of you all know that this. You can only get away from people, but for so long before somebody is going to catch you off guard and say, remember that conversation. Remember what you promised. Remember uh, some of you all, you know what I'm talking about, because you have been confronted on some things that you know you should have took care of. OK, and a person popped out of nowhere <laughs> or they followed you or they showed up at your doorstep or they showed up at the event that you didn't want them to show up at or they use some other people to send a message to you some people they have even gone through situations where their life was threatened or their family members or friends lives were threatened and others they pretty much were bullied to their face or beaten down to get results okay now of course we're not advocating that sort of behavior but I'm just saying that we got individuals that they do that sort of thing OK, some people got to spend some time in jail in order to figure out why, uh, you know, they are in jail to begin with because they couldn't figure it out when they were free. So now you got plenty of time to figure that thing out because pride at times will get in the way of people figuring out what it is that God wants them to do. God is ultimately in control. He is doing some things in people's lives right now as we speak to get them to talk, to get them to move, to get them to change, to get them to rearrange. It could be something as simple as moving a piece of furniture out the way that's causing everybody all sorts of difficulty in the household. <laughs> it's an annoying piece of furniture. It's something that's useless, right? And so enough things happen, then finally somebody gets a good idea. Oh, you know what? We need to rearrange the furniture. or We need to get rid of this, you see. OK, on a bigger level, on a more important level, there are those individuals who they avoid discussion on the issues. And so when they avoid the discussion on the issues, then things are turned up, turned out, <laughs> flipped upside down and sideways. We're going to put pressure on this person until they come to the table. We're going to put enough pressure on this group until they finally sign this agreement. Because this is something that's going to be beneficial. If everybody in the room is saying, hey, this is a good idea or this is beneficial and you've done the research and you've got witnesses and you even went to God and God himself said it's a good idea. Then, I mean, come on. What is the fight? Why is somebody refusing to discuss what is righteous and true? You see, sometimes the enemy is at work keeping people from reaching a compromise, keeping people from being free in Christ, keeping people bound in their circumstances, keeping people spending money that they shouldn't be spending on overpriced things. And when it's time to discuss the issues, when it's time to discuss the matter, uh, the person who is at fault, the person who's guilty, the person who didn't do their research, they're the ones who wants everybody to shut up and be quiet. And this is my thing. And I want to do it this way and all of that. Ignoring all of the wise counsel, ignoring, ignoring all of the benefits. OK, because some people simply allow ego to get in the way. It's my way or the highway type of folks. And this is why many people, they reap what they sow. They end up, as I've said in other audio, they get old because sooner or later, <laughs> come on, we're all going to get old. They get old and folks don't come to their aid. They get old and people start taking from them. They get old and people wish them dead. OK. That's how deep this thing goes. And it started with simply, I don't want to discuss what happened to you way back when, says the parent. I don't want to deal with the fact that you did this and you did that to me. But what about all of what you did to that person? And you don't want to discuss it. No. OK, you reap what you sow. There are some people being confronted on holidays. <laughs> There's the holiday that uh, celebrates parents, right? There's Grandparents Day, there's Father's Day, there's Mother's Day. And 
It's on those days that some individuals feel convicted on the things that they didn't say, didn't do. Others are confronted on those days because that's the time where everybody gets together. Other folks, it's either before the holiday or after the holiday. There's that conversation that you don't want to have with children and or grandchildren. But truth is truth. Some individuals are guilty as charged. They were abusive. Simply put, abusive. Their words were abusive. Their uh, uh, behavior, the things that they did was abusive. They stonewalled. They isolated. They physically abused. And they don't want to discuss. It wasn't me. Or I did it because right now for those people who do eventually open up their mouths and they provide a reason, whether you agree with it or not, then it happens. They end up placing some kind of blame or they make up excuses. And so the person who's confronting, they don't walk away in peace. Instead, they are back to square one again. This is why for some individuals, God has called you away from the conversation. Now, the person you've tried so many times to discuss what happened way back when childhood, you know, growing up, um, whatever. And the person keeps shutting you down or they name call or they go back to being abusive again. There comes a point where you've got to let go and just let God deal with them. It doesn't matter what the counselor said, the psychologist said, the psychiatrist said, what your family members and friends said, what you witness other people who had successful reconciliations and so forth encountered. You have reached a point where enough is enough. This is where some people end up, unfortunately, dishonoring uh, their elders, uh, disrespectful toward managers, coworkers, what have you. Because they're so frustrated that they can't get the conversation out that they always wanted to get out. Because here you go again, shutting me down, telling me go head on somewhere. Don't talk to me. Okay, so I know this about you and it frustrates me. So now I'm going to yell. I'm going to cuss. I'm a fuss. I'm going to act stupid. I'm going to pay you back or whatever else. And that is where the Christian messes up. Okay, I know the wicked does this sort of thing, but the Christian does it, too. You going to make me put this Bible on the shelf. I just want to deal with this issue right now. All you got to do is tell me why you did what you did. Oh, you don't want to talk to me about it. Okay, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they start hauling off, whooping on people, beating up people, stealing, taking things, you know, doing all sorts of crazy stuff because they've had enough. And the person who's guilty as charged wants to play dumb. Like, I don't know why she freaked out. I don't know why he's acting like this. I mean, oh, this is so not his personality. How many times are we going to bring up issues and then the issues are not addressed? They're not dealt with. How many times are we going to keep going around and around? Now, for some people, they did it and they actually got results. <laughs> they actually got results. They went crazy. And they got results. But once again, I'm not advocating that sort of thing. I'm asking that the Lord intervene. Now, sometimes the Lord will allow some craziness to take place. And it doesn't have to be the Christian that does it. It could be those that are already with Satan who freak out. They defend you. They flip out. I've had people very wicked, very ugly say, don't worry about it. I'll handle this. But I don't want you to. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to deal with this thing. You see. That's one time where sometimes you want the <laughs> you want the folks who uh, aren't so righteous <laughs> having your back. If you know that, uh, you know, it's going to uh, create an escape for you, an exit plan, if you will. I remember back in the day, just to give you an example, make it plain for some of you all so that you're not turning around saying, oh, we wait, or you advocating demonic, evil, dark, disturbing stuff and, you know, getting people involved that's unrighteous to do your dirty deeds. No, I'm not advocating that. What I'm saying is that we got some individuals, especially in families, where if they keep seeing that you're going through some things and there's some people that's doing some things that's disrespectful, ugly, what have you, then what they'll do is they will make a way to protect you, to defend you, to uh, create an exit plan for you um, in cases of domestic violence where a woman or man is living in a household and there's some ugliness that's going down. If you got some family members and friends uh, that's around, they're going to want to protect you. They're going to want to pull you up out of it, you know, uh, by any means necessary. You see, there are those times where God will raise up the most unlikeliest people to fight our battles.
Okay, whether you agree with how they go about doing it, the point is, is that they will uh, fight for you, you know, if you're in the right. (laughs) Now, you can discourage like in case in point, I knew one particular uncle who was very violent and he wanted to do somebody in. I discouraged him not to do it. Okay, at the request of his wife. So there are those times, once again, that you always want to choose the righteous path. Okay, even if it is tempting to choose evil and it all started because somebody didn't want to discuss, didn't want to deal with and chose to use their hands rather than their mouth because we have those individuals. No, I don't want to talk to you, but I will put my hands on you. Okay, really? That's not going to solve anything. I don't want to I don't want to deal with this issue, but I'll put so and so up to whooping on you. Now, that's not right. But you got some individuals that's like this, you see. And so God is not going to keep pushing you in the direction where the demonic is being empowered on the words or no words being spoken. He's just not going to do that. Okay. And you got some individuals who they will swear up and down at God. They, God told me to go over there. God didn't tell you to go over there and start no drama. Now you six feet deep in a grave, so to speak. Right. Or you in jail. Okay. Because there are those ghosts that roam around on this planet and they want their uh, sense of peace and they never get their sense of peace. They're restless spirits because they should have never done some things when they were walking on this side of life in their human bodies. But that's a whole nother discussion because some folks, they always wanted to have that discussion with the deceased and they never got it. And that hurts. That grieves some folks, but I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus to let go and let God and get the peace that you need. Get the peace that you need right now, because that conversation may not have turned out in the way that in your mind you believed it to turn out. You see, it could have ended up being even worse. It could have been the kind of conversation that would have started World War Three rather than just have one person be affected you see impacted and now deceased so let go of those regrets somebody needs that right now let go of the regret let go of the guilt that now that this person is gone and you didn't get to say everything you wanted to say let go of that in Jesus name they didn't want to talk about it or there wasn't enough time or you couldn't formulate your words it's okay it's all right God knows our hearts So turn over those burdens to the one true God and be at peace. When a person doesn't want to discuss, you don't have to go through all sorts of tactics in order to get them to discuss. Unless, of course, you're working (laughs) and then you've got to, you know, talk to managers and so forth. But you don't have to do manipulative, downright dirty things. Okay, God sees and you don't want to be held accountable. Well, blessings to you. As always, please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. We do welcome all sorts of giving on this channel. And you are welcome to check the description box on how you can do just that. Thank you, as always, for supporting this channel. Feel free to share, like, comment. Blessings to you.